In this demo, I'm going to show you how uh, we can call the Azure OpenAI API in a stream mode from um, an SPFX web part. A very fast about me slide. Um, my name is Luis Manev. I work as a chief architect at Clear People. I'm a Microsoft 365 development MVP and a usual contributor of this amazing community. And you can find me in the different social networks as Luis Manev. So feel free to say hi. Okay, uh, please note that this OpenAI service is still in preview. Uh, so we're gonna you're gonna need to ask uh, permissions to to Microsoft to to use it in your in your Azure subscription. So you're gonna need to fill a fairly long form specifying your subscription ID and another data. And after that, in two or three days, you should you should get a response and reply from Microsoft. And if they enable the service, uh, you can create an OpenAI service from the Azure portal as usual and you can uh, deploy the different models you want to use using the Azure OpenAI Studio. OK, let's see the web part in action. So I'm jumping into my browser. And well, my web part is uh, right now running uh, locally. So uh, this is the usual and typical UI from a, from a chat component. So uh, let's add something to the model. Let's say something like, what is Microsoft and the main benefits? And you can see the reply and how the the data is is getting back in in chunks and the and the text is being shown in the in the in the UI. Other feature of the web part is that um, the web part is stored in the the chat history. So with every request, the previous messages are also sent back to the to the model, giving some context. So for instance, now we can say, how can I? Sorry. How can I test it? <clears throat> and as you see, the model is um, again talking about Microsoft Azure and is giving you the, the response. Another um, interesting feature of calling the API in a stream mode is that at some point you're going to be able to cancel the the response so imagine that you ask something just by mistake or the model starts hallucinating and the response back is not uh, you realize that it's not is not good enough at that stage you can cancel the request and that's gonna stop the model to generating more data and obviously you are saving tokens and that's that means save money so save money so for instance if we say something like give me 200 random sentences. So the stream star, we are getting different random sentences and we have the stop generating button on here. So when we click, the request is the response is stop. So we are not getting more data and we are we are saving tokens. So um, that's mainly how the web part works and the different features and also uh, in case you want to use it the web part is configured you're going to need to configure the different open ai api settings the endpoint deployment name and an api key from from here and you should be good to use it in your in your tenant so let's go back to the slides okay let's take a quick look to how the request response looks like in in the stream mode so this is the the request the url is composed using the service name and, and the deployment name so we are sending the the different messages system message user assistant and, uh, and other parameters and the interesting part is this one the stream parameter set to true and in the response um, we're gonna get multiple chunks of data also know that the headers are different of the of the usual json so the content type is going to be an event stream and the transfer encode is is chunk and also in each chunk of data and uh, there's a json that you can see in the image uh, with this um, content delta content here is the is the actual text of the of the response and also keep in mind that when the 
when the response is done, we are going to get this done stream from the from the service in the in the stream. OK. OK, let's take a look to the source code. Well, uh, this is actually just the architecture of the of the multiple React components in the in the web part. Most of the magic is happening in that chat streaming uh, React component. That's the one that is calling the OpenAI in in a stream mode. The rest of the components are just are just uh, dump controllers components uh, rendering HTML. And uh, we are in the in the web part as uh, we saw. Uh, we have multiple properties uh, to configure the, the OpenAI API settings. Also, in the web part, in the render method, we are calling the chat streaming uh, React component with the Open API options and the HTTP client coming from the SharePoint framework context. And also uh, in the on init, we are starting and configuring the Microsoft Graph Toolkit as we are using the persona component in the in the UI. Uh, well, this uh, chat, this completion request builder class is just modeling the uh, request to the OpenAI API. So we have the messages list, the different parameters, and the stream uh, set to true. And also a couple of methods to add the, uh, the message, the history message with the user and an assistant and the build method to, to get the JSON stream. <clears throat> so uh, we have this chat as a stream function. In that function, we are composing the endpoint uh, URL from the different settings in the web part. And then um, the React component is storing uh, the multiple messages from the history, so uh, we are getting that history and, and send it back to the to the request. And all the magic is actually happening in this fetch event source. Uh, this is actually from an external package, uh, npm package, Microsoft fetch event source. And the thing is that event streams are actually um, native support by most of the modern browsers, but are quite li quite limited at this at this stage. So, for instance, you can only do get request, and this is not our case. We need to do a post. So this uh, package comes to the rescue. So we set the method and the and the headers with the API key. We build the request with the different parameters, a stream set to true. And this on message function is called every time a chunk of data is, is returned from the from the stream. So in this case, we are checking that the data is not this stream done, because uh, in this case, we are just done, we finish. Uh, otherwise, we parse the data and we have this, uh, we're looking for this delta content stream. So we are concatenating. Uh, this stream and also we are sending this signal uh, property. This is actually initializing the constructor of the of the component. This is um, we create an abort controller. This is a, a native class and uh, we pass the signal property. This is going to allow us to cancel the, res the response, the stream. So in the um, in the component where we are calling the user message and uh, react component, we are passing that our controller. So later in that component, in the user message component, in the on click of the stop generated button, we call the abort method in the controller. So that's going to stop the stream and also it's going to fire the on close event in the fetch event source function. Uh, so we can take action in there. The source code is already available in the in the repo in that URL, so feel free to use it. And that's all from my side. Thank you very much. And back to you, Gary.